as I'm in it, it's not too bad. Handbrake's nice and easy to get to. Still hit all the gears. Okay, so last time we put the coilovers on. Did all the new bushings. So good. Yep. And uh, got it sitting at a pretty nice ride height. We've already cleaned out the wiring harness. It's a big mess, about 60 pounds of useless stuff. We're actually gonna redo all of the wiring, so we didn't need any of the old stuff. In the meantime, I've got all new brake stuff from Willwood. And I got a new pedal box just to clutch in the brake together. It's gonna be kind of hard to install because it's not just a bolt-on. So what I have to do is cut this out to allow some space for the reservoirs, make a plate for that to cover everything up. Then we're going to box something in here to brace everything. It's gonna take quite a bit of brake pedal pressure and clutch pressure, and I think it'll flex the firewall, so it's gonna need some serious structure, maybe tied into the cage or, or something else. We'll see how far we get, but the fab stuff is gonna take a little while. What you know about catching cars on fire? Yeah, I just knocked the ground off. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. It's so close. Come plate this off. Make something to suspend it. All right, so when we got this car, it was an automatic, which is weak for an M3. We wanted to change it to a manual and uh, we lost some of the brake stuff along the way. So what we did instead is get a pedal box from Willwood and we got everything kind of mounted up and in there. Um, just the location of it. It's not too structural yet. The problem is, is you have a lot of force when you're on the clutch and the brake at the same time. Jamie, you want to show them what's going on with the pedal? So you can see it flex just a bit. So I'm going to have to make some more bracing. I've already tied a little bit into the cage, but it's just kind of a difficult spot. All right, so I have everything pretty much mounted up, ready to go, it's really stiff, won't be moving much. So now I wanna move on to the brake lines, which it's been kind of a problem because they're bubble flare, and the other ones we have are just a regular double flare. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to flare brake lines. Um, this is just a pretty simple double flaring kit you can get at almost any auto parts store. You have kind of a, a press and die and then one clamp with multiple sizes and then different sizes for different size lines. You'll also need a small file and then just a pipe cutter uh, just to get a nice clean cut. So it's pretty simple. You tighten that down, not too much pressure so you can still rotate it and you don't want to actually crimp the line. You can squeeze that too tight and, and bow the line in. You don't want to do that. You just make small cuts, tighten it each time. Nice clean cut, straight. So it leaves a little bit of extra metal. You need to get that all off. And then just a camphor like this, kind of off to the side to take the edge off of it. That way when you flare it, it doesn't crack. One thing you wanna make sure before flaring is to have the appropriate fitting. If you've already bent your line, then you'll have a big problem getting this on. So you wanna put this on before when it's really straight. The next would be clamping it correctly. So this is kind of difficult to see, but there's a little bit poking off to the side here. And this has a few ridges on it. You want to have that sticking out the same width as that ridge. And then you'd have this clamped down. You want to clamp it evenly. And you want to clamp it tight because you don't want it to move because you're putting a lot of pressure on it with this. So I always get a screwdriver just to give a little bit more. And this always kind of needs to be widened out a little bit. Barely crank it down just to spread it out. You can back that off and put this tool in. And this is the part that does the flaring. So this is accepted in the top. Start it nice and even. And then you start to crank it down. And it takes a fair bit of pressure. You want to go pretty much all the way down. And that's already started. And then I go back over it just to open it up a little bit. Pop this open. 
can see how that rests in there. Very nice though. Now if you can see down in here, this is a bit convex. So that's sticking out a little bit. That one's gonna go in. So when this goes down, it's gonna seal it even further. And that gives you your sealing surface. European stuff, a lot of them they do a bubble flare. So that process is a little bit different. It's basically the same thing. You're just gonna use the other side of this. With the bubble, I don't go quite all the way. And you can see the difference here in that flare. So that's bubbled out a bit. One basically fits inside the other. Really the difference is just between manufacturers. Typically you'll see this flare on the American cars and this one on European. All of your hydraulic e-brake stuff like that will be this kind of flare most of the time. And this is just gonna be what you have on a factory car if you're gonna use factory brake line and stuff like that. So I'm gonna pull the wheels off, pull out the old lines and start fabricating new ones uh, to replace all the old factory stuff and, and upgrade it to uh, the different flares that we need. So now that we have all the brakes pretty much done and ready to go, the next thing I wanted to do is move on to the hydraulic e-brake just to seal up all the brakes and get that done. But we don't have everything yet. We have an appointment with Willwood to go meet up with them, and we're gonna go over there later today. But in the meantime, what I'd like to do is throw in the diff that we got from WaveTrack. So got a little brake clean while we seal it. The gear oil, kind of fun. Did you stab an eighth of an inch? I usually do everything about finger tight and then give it just about 10 minutes to dry up a little bit. But that's it, it's ready to go. All you do is tighten it up, throw it in. All right, so while the diff is drying up, before we uh, completely tighten that down and seal everything up, I'm gonna put in the axles and we have to put those in first. And one of the problems we have with this new ride height because of the coilovers is that this control arm is in the way. Uh, it kind of blocks the axle from going in. So what we're gonna have to do is pull the wheels off support this, the whole spindle, and then drop it down just a bit to slide the axles in, and then put it back up and throw that bolt back on. So the axles will be in place. By the time we have that done, we should be able to seal up the diff. New diffs in, axles are in, ready to go. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Now we gotta get a little wood and get the rest of our stuff. And remember to pick up that bolt. I guess it's red, that means it's on. I mean, I see the red light, so. So, anyway, we just got here uh, at Willwood to check out some new stuff, pick up some stuff that we have to get. Yep. And uh, got a meeting with some of the guys, show us around this place, see how cool it is. Yep. Oh, hey guys. What's up? Hi, how are how you? Going? How are you, man? So I'll give you the, the uh, 10 cent tour. So all the fixtures you see when we walk through here, mm -hmm. it's all titanium. Wow. It's a 350 small block. It's <laughs> <That's> red. <laughs> it's a cast iron steel, cast steel. Mm -hmm. And these go in windmills. Windmills? windmills? Yeah. All right, so next on our list was to do a handbrake. And we came here to talk handbrakes with the guys who make them. So there's two different ways to do this. We've got either its own separate circuit or we've got a blow through. So I call a blow through where it's going to be one set of calipers on the back and then your foot brake, mm -hmm. that master cylinder circuit, blows through this. I'm going to say more of the drifting, the grip. I think a dual caliper setup is definitely the way to go. Yeah. Now, is there a wrong way to mount that? As far as like a dual caliper, what would be the most ideal way if you have a factory brake sitting on the back of the car? So a lot I've of times- I've seen a bunch of different ways to do it. Is it just where it fits or where is there a better- It comes spot? down sometimes to just where it fits, you know? So- Is there complications with bleeding and stuff yeah. at that point? 
that, so the, that's the pretty best much your limiting place, factor. Yeah, the best place to always mount your calipers is at three or nine o'clock. Hmm. And there's a bunch of reasons why. Three or nine, remember that. Three or nine. <laughs> like it, people always ask me, oh, I did mine at one o'clock. And I'm like, it's terrible. Because no matter what, you're going to have yeah. knockback. Yeah. And at one o'clock, you've got a lot more knockback on, say, a 13 inch rotor than you do at three or nine o'clock. So if you have room, three and nine is best. But a lot of times you can't do that. You can't put it anywhere else because of all the suspension. That's the other thing that people don't get is when they're not able to do that, sometimes you have to dismount and then bleed the caliper and remount it. I've learned enough. Cool. I can't wait to use it. I'm gonna take one. I'm gonna take one and put it on a car and rip it. Fishing. Thanks, man. All right, man. Thanks for educating us. You got it. I don't know much. <laughs> That's why I call it professionals. Much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the wrong guy then. So today we're waiting on a few parts to finish the hydro setup. In the meantime, what I want to do is get the angle kit on. So we're going to take off the front suspension, get that all dialed in, and just hopefully get everything aligned and suspension work done. Pulled off all the old stuff. Pretty simple, just a, a little bit difficult to bang out some of the ball joints. But other than that, it's only three things you gotta take off and uh, everything's ready to go. So now I'll give you a little comparison on what the factory stuff looks like as compared to what we have aftermarket. All right, so this is the factory lower control arm from BMW and ball joints are integrated and got a rubber lollipop on the end here that goes into the chassis itself. Now we have a new angle kit. There's multiple different kits you can buy and aftermarket stuff is just the way to go if you're gonna do drifting. As you can see, a tubular version of, of what we have here. It's quite a bit stronger and they keep this to allow the wheel to go in and out. And then you have this to relocate the tie rod in. So that's basically all you really need to do when you're uh, changing the angle of a vehicle is bringing the tie rod to a different location. So it's basically moving the pickup point of where the tie rod actually goes into it. That's going to provide the angle. So this bolts onto the upright that is factory for BMW and it's just a direct replacement. So you don't have to cut anything, you don't have to weld anything, it's just a, a bolt on and it'll give you maybe 20 degrees extra angle. It's pretty simple to do. This goes onto the factory tie rod and this goes to the inner. That's going to take some effort. <laughs> so that's basically how that sits. This goes to where the engine mount is. This here goes to the bottom of the upright where the ball joint normally sits, this one here. And then that's where it changes the, the tie rod length on the spindle. Let's go see how it fits on the car. All right, so we put the new angle kit on. It was relatively simple. Um, everything came off really easily. Everything went back together pretty easily. Tightened up, and I just went with all the way towed in for now, just because I need a base point to start. So I have both the tie rod spots maxed out. So that way when I set it on the ground, it's just a quick adjustment this direction, and that'll tow it out, and we can start from a, a base there. But it's fairly simple. The, Bushing was replaced here with a Delrun bushing. And then uh, this bolt goes all the way through to where the motor mount is. And then this goes where the former ball joint went. And this relocated the tie rod, which was here and is now here. So this is what changes the angle of everything. And as you can see, it sits really flat, which is good for all the geometry. You don't want this at a different level rather than this being facing up. So. It's really nice, and uh, I'll show you how much angle we got out of it. 
And again, this, uh, this is towed all the way in, so it will be a bit further out. S serious improvement, and this is kind of set in the middle. There's different Ackerman settings for different track use. So this is right in the middle for us to do grip days and drift days. So we're going to do both, and uh, I'm not too great, greedy on angle myself, so this is a huge improvement to me and kind of a big adjustment to drive with. So we'll start from here, and if we need more, we'll just change the settings. All right, so the angle kit's on, ready to go, and this bracket just showed up for the hydro. So we're ready to go with uh, our new Willwood hydro brake, which is uh, vertical, which is going to be really rad. So first things first, I got to get in the car and kind of feel out a spot of where I want to place this. One of the things I got to do is make myself feel comfortable and kind of get the cockpit in order. And the one of the things I got to do is get the steering wheel right. So I put a new steering wheel with NRG quick release and got that kind of at the depth of where I want to sit. I, you know, the BMW is very flat and this added just a little bit more. I have short arms, so I had to bring it a little bit closer to me. And the other part would be the pedals. The brake pedal was actually sitting a little further over to the clutch and that would drive me crazy because I like the heel and toe. So I've moved it over just a little bit. And then I added a, a shorter shifter and that actually brought it closer to me and back towards the cabin. Now this seat does not fit me. It's kind of an awkward spot, but I've got it to a position where I, I can manage. And um, I, that's where the handbrake comes in. So all that in place is where I want to put the handbrake. So I need the steering wheel, I need the shifter and all that in place. And then I found where I wanted to put the handbrake close enough to where I don't hit the shifter. It's not in the way of the steering wheel and I feel a little bit comfortable. And what I'm gonna do is grind off all that paint and then make some plates for the bottom of the handbrake itself and um, then weld it to the trans tunnel. But the trans tunnel is so flimsy that it's gonna need a, a lot of bracing, a big contact area or a big surface area for the pad itself. Otherwise I'll be able to pull it off the trans tunnel, which would be a horrible thing. I'm gonna get started. So I just finished this bracket for the handbrake and this is going to weld to the trans tunnel but I'm going to have to reinforce that. Uh, what I did was just kind of replicate the shape of what this is and then weld in two bolts to create studs because I won't be able to access them. So it just slides right on just like that and you'll be able to put a nut on top and this will be removable. Um, otherwise you'd have to put these on beforehand and then weld it in and you wouldn't be able to make it removable. So that's a pretty slick trick if you uh, need to get that done. And uh, now you gotta place it and put it in the car, weld it in. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, geez. Oh, no. Really done it this time. All right, so Jamie and I put the new angle kit on. We tested it out. It's pretty rad. Got a lot of angle. Uh, modified some of the cockpit. Got it in order for myself. And then put in the handbrake. And it is mega close to the seat. As you can see, because this is a really wide seat, it was made to fit Scotto, but um, tried to make it repurposed for myself. It's pretty close to the shifter, but that's all the way up in first gear right there, so it's, it's not too hard to handle. And um, it's just tacked in right now. I'm going to have to build some more brackets for it, Jamie. Yep. I'll uh, demonstrate. So yeah, as I'm in it, it's not too bad. Handbrake's nice and easy to get to. Still hit all the gears. Everything's pretty accommodating for me, so as long as I don't get uh, panic hands and smack that, but I don't think I will, so. 
feels good to me. That's a good spot for me for the day. Get back into it tomorrow and make some more gussets and stuff for that because this is not going to hold. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> <laughs>